everyone, I'm Jo from Country Cow Designs and in this video I'm just going to show you how to hack the Toge pattern to have a zipper top. So this is probably the most requested video I've ever had so hopefully there's a lot of you that will enjoy this. The Toulouse is one of my patterns that's available from my website and ordinarily it just has a magnetic snap at the top. So for this I've provided some instructions on how to install this recessed zipper. So there's loads and loads of ways to add a zipper to the top of the bag. This is the way I've decided to do it because this is a beginner friendly pattern and I wanted it to be as simple as possible to top stitch. So if you're using just a zipper at the top, it can change the shape of the bag. It can make it more difficult to top stitch. So once I considered all those things, I decided this was the way I wanted to go with it. So I'll just open it up and you'll see that there's a little tail here. So if you want to, you could probably cut it a little bit shorter than mine if you want to have a short tail. I like to have mine quite long, just feel like it makes it really easy to open the bag, nice and wide. And this zip per panel just lies flat into the bag and it opens nice and wide. That's another reason I decided to do it this way, because having a zipper with tabs on the top, you can't get it open as wide. So this is just the method I've decided to go with. Now, if you're sewing on a domestic machine like me, I strongly recommend using cotton for the top. It's got enough stability with the foam support, so you, you don't need to have cork or vinyl at the top. And because you're gonna to be stitching, top stitching around the seams, I strongly recommend having cotton at the top. It's just gonna be so much easier for you on a domestic machine, which would mean using cotton for here. So I'll show you the measurements in the next shot for the pieces that you need. Um, but you're gonna have these thin pieces up here. So you've got one around here and one around here. So this is the long thin piece that you want made out of your exterior fabric. And then you're gonna have these zipper panel pieces. So you'll have two exteriors and two lining pieces. And again, if you've got a cotton on your exterior and you're using a domestic machine, I strongly recommend using cotton. I think if I'd had cork for these top pieces as well as out here, I don't think I would have been able to top stitch it. So I think that's everything you need to know. And hopefully you'll find this video really helpful. Just uh, leave a comment, let me know if you want me to change the way I do things, um, anything that you'd recommend. And yeah, enjoy the video. Okay, so we're gonna start from step eight in the pattern. So what you should have at this point is your exterior completed. And you'll also have your two main lining panels and this one will already have the pocket attached. So just set those aside for a moment. And what we'll do is we'll start with the zip. So I've cut my zip at 11 inches long and I'm using zipper tape. So the first thing I need to do is put my zipper head on. So the easiest way to do this is just to pull the teeth apart. And then I'm going to feed it on a little bit on each side and just try and get it to go on there you go, about the same amount on each side. So it's like that. And then put your two fingers here and just pull the head on. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just treat the ends with a lighter. You can use fray check if you prefer, but it just stops it from um, fraying later on because zips have a habit of doing that. So make sure you know which way it's gonna go closed. So this is gonna close and this is gonna open. So the end that it goes towards open, this end, is where we need to put a zip tail. So you've got two choices. You could do a fabric zip tail. So for that, you can cut a piece that's two inches by two and a half inches, fold over all four sides by a quarter of an inch. And then you just need to fold that over the end and just stitch 
around the whole thing. So that's quite a common way to do it and you'll be stitching through both sides. But for me, I much prefer using a hardware zip end. So this is a hardware zip end. It's got a tiny little screw with it. And what I'm gonna do is pop that on there. Sorry, wait, yep, yeah, pop it on that end. So first things first, I'm just gonna trim the tape down a little bit to make it fit easier. So I'll just take a tiny bit off. So before I put this in, I'm gonna put some glue into here. I think it just helps to hold it in place. I don't know if it's actually necessary in the instructions. You'll have to check the manufacturer that you're using, but. Just make sure you don't get it on the outside. The next thing I'm gonna do is fold it like this, so that it's going to the underneath. And then push it in like that. So grab your screw, pop that in there, and you're gonna need a nice small screwdriver. Now, ideally you want a magnetic one. It will make it easier to keep the screw in place. So once it's screwed in, it should look like that. Now for me, that's just a lot neater than a fabric one. So next thing I'm gonna do is mark it three quarters of an inch in from this end. So just mark it on both sides and then you can separate this. So where your marks are, you want to pinch this together. And what will happen is it will create this nice little fold here, but you want the fold to be on the mark that you made. Hopefully if you've got a light zipper, this will be a much easier. And then you just want to sew a few stitches across this, either with your machine or just by hand. It's not gonna be seen, it doesn't need to be neat. And you're just gonna sew that into place. So for me, I prefer to do this by hand because I just cannot get it to stay straight while I'm sewing it on the machine. It just ends up wiggling out. Okay, so that's all you need to do. On the other side now, we're gonna pinch it again and fold it on that mark. Okay, just make sure that it matches nice and neat before you sew it into place. And like I said, these stitches are never gonna be seen. It doesn't need to be neat. You're just literally holding it in place. And most people, I think, do this on their machine. I just cannot get it to stay in place when I'm doing it. Okay, so check that that's nice and neat and they meet up and that's your zipper all prepared. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take your two lining pieces and we're gonna trim them slightly. So let's start with the one with the pocket. And all we're going to do is take half an inch off the top. And you're going to take the same amount off, whether you're doing the tall or the small version, just half an inch. Now what you should have is you should have 
two lining pieces, two exterior pieces. Now for mine, although I'm using cork at the top of my exterior, I've decided to use cotton for this top bit. So what you probably want to do if you're sewing on a domestic machine like me is you want to use cotton on the top because it's great to have this matching the inside. Um, but I wasn't thinking about it at the time, so I used cork. If you're using an industrial machine, you can use whatever you want. Um, but if you want to make the top stitching nice and easy for yourself, I would recommend using cotton for the top, which means this is going to match it. And these two pieces are also going to match. So we don't need those quite yet. First of all, we're going to start and make the zipper panel. So place your zip right side up. Now you may find it easier to just have this undone when you're doing this. What we want to do is fit these to the zip, but first we're going to have to get rid of our raw edges. So I'm going to take these all four pieces over to the iron. I'm going to fold over and press by about a quarter of an inch on the short ends of all four pieces. So that's all four zipper panel pieces folded over and pressed by a quarter of an inch on each side. And just make sure that they're all the same size before we start. So place your zipper right side up. And what we're going to do first of all is clip this exterior piece to the zip. So it's going to be right sides together. And what you want to do is line up these turned teeth here with this fold. And now we're just going to baste this into place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So there, there it is basted into place. Next, you want to flip this over and place the lining piece right sides together with the exterior. And match that up on both ends and just clip it into place. Now we're going to sew through this close to the zip. So I'm going to use about a quarter inch seam allowance. What I'm going to do is just move my needle over towards the zip so that then I can use my presser foot as a guide to get a nice straight line as I sew it. I've got that all sewn in now and you can see I've not quite gone to the end. You don't want to go over the end, you just want to go up to it. Now we're just going to push those away from the zip. So what I like to do is get the bottoms to meet up and just clip them together. And then I'm going to take it over to the iron and I'm going to press both sides away from the zip like this to get a nice neat finish. And they should both be meeting up here at the bottom. So just give that a good press with the iron. If you're using cork or vinyl, then I would press this with your fingers instead. Okay, now we're ready to top stitch. So I'm going to top stitch up here across here and down with an eighth of an inch and I'm also just going to sew that closed whilst I'm at it. Now everybody likes their zipper panels different. That is one thing I've learned. I like to have a nice little gap here. Um, if you don't want that large and you want the zip closer to the end by all means just move it further in. Everybody likes it differently and this is just the way that I like to do it. All 
Right, so that's one side of your zipper panel done. So we're just gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. So grab your exterior piece and place that right sides together with your zip and make sure that you've lined it up again. So for me, I lined up the zipper teeth pretty much with this and I'm gonna do the same thing on this side because we want them to match. Now, if you prefer, you can go ahead and clip the lining on right sides together and sew them both at once. I prefer to do it this way just for accuracy, but it's totally up to you. But I'm now going to baste this into place again with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you've got that basted into place, turn it over and you want to put this lining piece right sides together with the exterior. Check that they match up nicely on the ends and then sew through this with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now, same as before, we're gonna turn these over, clip them wrong sides together. And then I'm gonna take this over to the iron and press both sides away from the zip. And next we're gonna to top stitch again these three sides and sew this side closed. So that's your finished zip panel. Now, you're gonna need your lining piece that's got the zipper in it. So if you want this to be at the back of the bag, then you want to have your zip panel this way up with it closed on here. I just like to have my zipper pulls, you know, on the same side when they're closed. Mark the centers of the zipper panel and both lining panel pieces, and then you're just gonna match that up. and clip it into place. Now you just wanna baste that into place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now that's basted, grab one of your exterior top pieces and what you wanna do is just clip that into place right sides together. Once that's clipped right sides together, we're just going to sew through the whole thing with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. You might find just here where your zipper panel starts and ends that you need to use something like a hump jumper just to make sure that your stitches don't skip. Okay, so I've sewed that in place. I didn't need to use a hump jumper actually, but if I was using cork or vinyl or something, maybe I would have, would have had to do that. So I'm just going to push that up. You can press that with an iron if you want to. And the next thing I'm gonna do is top stitch through here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, there you've got it all top stitched into place. So next thing you need to do is grab the other lining panel, which you should also have marked at the center and match that up with this remaining side of the zipper panel and clip it into place. Now we're gonna sew, we're just gonna baste this on with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now, if you want to, you can just go ahead Clip that right sides together, sew through the whole thing with a 3 eighths of an inch. But again, I'm just gonna baste it first because I just like to do that for accuracy. All right, if you've basted like me, now you can clip this right sides together. So this is our final exterior piece. And now you're gonna sew through this with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so that's sewn on 
And the same as before, I'm gonna push this up, give it a good press. You can press this with the iron if you want to. And I'm gonna top stitch through here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So that is your zipper panel all connected. Now you can see that I've got a bit of a zipper tail. That's how I like my bags because then they open like really wide, really easy. Um, but of course, if you want to, you can have a shorter zipper. You could probably take maybe maybe two or one and a half inches off that if you really want to. Depends again on the style that you like. You can have the zip teeth, zip teeth further up if you prefer that. Um, there's lots of different things that you can do with zippers. So just decide what you prefer. So now you're just going to skip straight to step 8.7, mark the centers of the bottom of your lining panels and sew the rest of the lining together. The rest is going to be the exact same as the standard construction of this bag. So you're just going to construct it just like you would have normally. Follow the pattern through to the end and when you're finished, you're going to have yourself a zipper panel. So the only thing to watch out for is that you don't sew through this so make sure it's nicely tucked in when you're sewing the sides and make sure that it's open for when you're turning your bag later on so when you get to your final construction and the lining is going inside the exterior just make sure that your zipper panel is open and it's pointing downward and you're just going to attach it exactly like you would if you didn't have a zipper panel